I hear the challenge in the spirit. If you haven't felt it yet, you're, you're, you're needing to open up your eyes and open up your ears. The challenge in the spirit is to become who he's called you to be. <coughs> it's through that place, it's in that place of walking with him, you're going to touch many lives. If we stay grounded in our routines and our ruts, we're not going to save anybody. But with passion, with fire, we can begin to change things. We can see the chaff and the dross burn away. We can see people being affected. But you have to be ready. You have to be passionate for the Lord. Our, our God is good to be fire. You can't serve Him in coolness. Being cooled off. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 takes, it takes energy. It takes passion. And that's why He said, I would rather that you be cold or hot. Because lukewarm is not going to get it. At all. all right. If you're cold, that's cool. He can deal with you. Hopefully. If you allow him to deal with you. Amen? But if you're just playing the game, God said he's going to spew that. He needs us passion. Amen. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to look at that this morning. His thoughts that the Lord had given me. In John chapter 14, 6. Is where he said that. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this he said in response to declaring who he is, that he had come to give us peace. He had come to prepare a place for us as his family, as his, as his brothers. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And what did he get? He got rebuttal from his very disciples, from Thomas, from Philip. They looked at him. Philip so bold as to say, Lord, show us a father and suffice us. The same context, same two verses later, verse 8. Philip is questioning this. And Jesus says, have I been with you so long that you don't know when you see me? You see the father? What does he say? What does he go on to say? It's so important that you see what he said here. In John chapter 14. He says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, last part of verse 10, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he speaks. Is that what it says? No. No, it does not, does it? But the Father that dwelleth in me, what? He doeth the works. Very interesting. Very key point. You don't see it, you're dead. You're dead in the spirit if you don't see it. He says, it's the words that I speak. I don't speak of myself, but the Father that dwells in me does the works. The kingdom of God is not in words, but in deed. The Lord speaks to our heart by the Spirit, and we translate the speaking into doing. That's why faith without works is dead. And that's why you cannot say I was wrong when I said if you don't understand this, you're dead. What does understand mean? Understand means I have not only knowledge of it, but I have made it my guiding principle. I am standing under this truth. That's why he said I am the way, the truth, and the life. When it is my understanding, it is my mode of operation. That's what understanding is. What's the difference between understanding and knowledge? Come on. Right? What's the difference? Knowledge is knowing. Understanding is the application of it. It's the way I do life. Wisdom is the ability to do. My ability to do it. But understanding is how I've positioned myself. That's why I love it being a compound word. Understanding. I'm standing under Christ. And it's how I do it. The way he did it. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says that the, the words that the Father speaks, it's the work that he does. Me. No man can do these things except the Father be with them, that God be with them. We've learned that through the Scripture. We are translators of the Spirit, the words of the Holy Spirit in our life. We are translators into the action of seeing His kingdom come, His will be done. Without that peace, we are just sounding brass, tinkling cymbals. We're really of none effect. It ain't about the words that we produce, that we speak out there. It's about the actions that are derived from the Word of God into our life. 
Matthew chapter 4, and verse 4 said what? It said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God comes to me that it might be assimilated into my life. I might become renewed in the spirit of my mind to the principle, the word, the truth that God invests, the word, into my life that I might translate that principle that's eternal, that's godly, that is of the Father into the action, the nature of Revelation of who God is in the earth. And I'm to preach all day long. That's heavy. That's exactly what God has called us to be. So I know why he, he spoke forth the word this morning. But this is not no spectator sport. If all you're doing is spectating, I'm going to say get up off the line before he spews you from your mouth. Okay, his mouth. Amen? Because it ain't a spectator sport. Either be cold or hot. Don't convince yourself, oh, I'm okay. A man that does not do the word of God deceives himself, James says. Yeah. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, unless you deceive yourself. So important that we get with the revelation. This is not laity and clergy. That's not what this is. This is a New Testament church of Jesus Christ, where we are all members in particular. And some are given gifts to encourage and build the body for the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Translating what God has said into action. That's the work of the ministry. Does that make sense this morning? Yeah. You know it makes sense because it's God the Father giving it to us this morning. It's anointing. It's His Spirit, and we need to respect it. Because in all my studying this morning, it had nothing to do with any of this. But when God makes things perfectly clear, He's saying, take note. This is what I want you to do. And so this morning, I'm very thankful. I'm thankful that as He reveals His Word to us. Father, we thank You, Lord, that as You reveal Your Word to us, Lord, that we will not be forgetful hearers. We will be doers. Lord, we will apply ourselves. The Bible says in Proverbs that we should, in all that getting, I believe it was in chapter 4 last week, Drew was studying it, was it? In all that getting, get understanding. Today it's our purpose of our heart to know that we want to understand the word. Not just receive it so it can tickle our ears as knowledge. Not just so we can say, I've heard that, I know that. But that I can understand it, Lord. That I can position myself to do life according to it. That is my way of doing it. So, Lord, we bless you this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you give us your word that we might be able to do. Not what we want to do, but what you let us do, what you want us to do, what you tell us to do. Lord, that's what's so great about it. Don't got to come up with a plan. You got a plan. Bless you, Lord. All we got to do is be obedient to walk in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you this morning, Lord. We love you. We bless you, and we ask you, Lord, to have your way now in this time of, of listening to your spirit. In Jesus' name, the saints said. Amen. 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 So powerful. The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Likewise, verse 11 confirms it. I'm not just stretching it. He says, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Can't get your mind around that? Well then, believe me for the very works sake, because no man can do these things except God be with him. What was he doing? He was raising the dead. He was opening the blind eye. He was healing the, the, the paralytic. He was forgiving sin. Ooh, even before the cross. That's a good word, isn't it? Yeah. That's the heart of God. It wasn't something new. It wasn't something that man derived he was going to do by hanging on the cross. No, he said, your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and walk. He was healing before he had even paid the price. You know, he was setting people free. Forgiven sins. Praise God. That's awesome. So you know it's the heart of God. No man, no man has stretched this thing. The gospel is not of our own private interpretation. It is not of our own making of it. Amen. It is confirmed and reaffirmed through the scriptures and by the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. So I have great hope in my heart today. It's not about what I can do. It's not about my ability. It's about his ability in me. Amen. His ability to speak to my life. If I keep myself encumbered and cluttered and busied about the affairs of life, I will not be able to receive from God maybe the words that I actually need to receive that I might be able to do what he's called me to do. Amen? I need to be able to receive from God and apply what he gives me. And so that means we all have to keep an open ear. So we worship him in spirit and in truth. Bless the Lord. I like this particular scripture that I wrote down this morning as I was studying it out. 
Uh, this was a neat, neat scripture here that kind of applies. Let me go ahead and read this to you. It says in Psalms chapter 86, verse 11 through 12, David said this. He says, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. He said, teach me your way, and I will what? I will do. I walk means to live. Our conversation in life is our living it out, right? That's why I brought the scripture to our attention in John chapter 14, verse 6. That I am the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is not just making a cliche statement there. He is saying, I am the way. You follow the way I do this thing. He says, and that way happens to be truth. I am the way and the truth. What I am doing is true. It has come from the Father. It is revealed by the Father. It is recorded in the Word of God. And He is the Word incarnate because that's all He chose to do is fulfill what is written in the volume of your book, O Lord. He is the Word of God, John chapter 1 says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And guess what? The Word manifests Himself here. Amen. And it says in the Gospel of John that in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, when we sing about we are a city set upon a hill, we are the light of the world, we are set upon the hill, that's because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And what does he do? He calls us to follow him. Matthew chapter 4, 4 said we have to not live by bread alone, but by every word. Later on in that chapter, after the temptation in the wilderness, what's the very first thing he did? He called the first couple of disciples to become the apostles, ultimately become the apostles, apostles, and he said what? He said, follow me. It's the same call to you and I, each and every one of us, to follow him. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And as we follow him, we will be just like him. If we just follow him without applying, oh sure, we won't look anything like him, will we? If we just call him in name but not apply what he says, you'll look a whole lot different than Christ. But if you follow him and you do what he says, you'll look just like him. So that's what we see here. We see David crying out, teach me thy way, O God. Teach me thy way. I will walk in thy truth. So when Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, I believe he was definitely trying to motivate us to see there are advantages to his way, which is the truth. It is the life. Any other life you have falls short of his life. If you choose not to follow him, his way you will not enjoy his life. Because he said, I have come to give life. And life more abundant. How many know you see Christians that struggle? I'm not saying that first of affliction isn't something that we all go through. Sure we do. But there's people that struggle, and rightly so, by their own means. They refuse to do things with wisdom. They refuse to do things as the Lord shares how things should be done. In other words, they do it their own way. Instead of letting God reveal the truth about something and apply my heart to it and allow God to bless it and bring life about it, I find myself doing it my own way because Pappy taught me that. Or my brother, my sister that, you know, I, I, I you know, learned from. You know, I was watching them do life and I just do it like them. I don't listen to God. And so when I shut that down, I reap those results. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I guarantee you, you do something the way God says do it, you reap his results. You'll reap the benefits of life. He says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. The life, the abundant life that he purposed to give cannot come any other way other than surrender Amen. to doing his way. That's Period. True. You can't have both ways. You just can't. So the flesh says you'll reap corruption. Galatians chapter 5, right? Yes. So the Spirit will reap life everlasting. Amen. You know, we have to listen to the Spirit of God be the translators of those words into the actions of God. And God will make sure your life is abundantly blessed. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Every good blessing, every wonderful home, every wonderful car, every good, you know, every family member, every everything. It's all added to you by the blessing of God. And if you're out there working for it, you're trying to make it happen in your own strength. Miserable are you? Miserable. But the person that's filled with these things, they have the things added unto them that, that doesn't have, you know, God makes rich and brings increase, but you don't bring any sorrow. 
You know, you see that person walking around with a bounce on their step, joy, they're like carefree, they don't care. You know, God took it, God can have it. You know, it don't matter. They just enjoy it. They enjoy what God's given them. Peter said it this way. He said in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, he says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. The way of following Christ is the way it's supposed to be. You follow the way he did it. You don't do it your own way. You can't forge a new path. You can't carve out your own trail. Because you don't know where that's going to end up. But I know where Christ's trail is going to end up. I watched what Jesus did. And death, power, death didn't have any power over him, amen? Grave couldn't hold him. He'd come up out of that grave. And guess what? If you follow his way, death can't hold you. The grave can't hold you. Amen. amen. You have assurance in that. You just need to follow his way. And you will be delivered from that. Praise God. So John chapter 4. I'm going to turn there and read a couple of scriptures to us. In, in, in verse 23 and 24, we quoted this a little bit, I think, through the, the, the just time of worship this morning. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I love the rest of the scriptures. I've got to read it before I focus on the first part of this. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Amen. This is what God is all about. He's wanting those the true worshipers that worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. God is a Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and truth. Verse 24 says, now what's he saying here verse 23? This is the hour when God is enjoying, He's actually seeking out those that have such heart to worship Him in Spirit and truth, which means to hear what he's got to say, and to let it be applied and overflow in their life. That's what worship is. Worship is not just a matter of how contrite can I be before the presence of God. Worship is about where's my surrender? Who do I yield to? What do I allow myself to do? If God moves upon your heart to speak an encouraging word to someone, and you encourage them, or you bless them, or you serve them, you have just worshipped God. God is looking for the true worshipers. Not a worship service where we sit here and lift up holy hands. He's looking for the life that truly exemplifies his nature. Yields to the words that are spoken to it. Just as Jesus said in John chapter 14. The Father speaketh, but it's his works that you see produced in my life. Because I yield to it. Translate. Jesus is the light. Now, I want to bring this, we know this, and I want to bring this thought together like this. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. John chapter 1 said, in him was life. And the life was the light. What is the light? The light is the expression of God. It's not a concept. It's not a thought. It's not an idea. It's a physical reality. Go turn the light off, it gets dark in here. You turn the light on, boom, it's light in here, don't it? We can see each other, right? Turn it off, might not be able to see each other, but it's too dark in here, right? You turn the light on, you can see. It's the expression of God. The light is the expression of God. It's showing who He is. He's the light. What He can do. He's here to give life. He's here to give us hope. He's here to set us free. He's here to deliver. Amen? That's who He is. And so Jesus is the light. That life was the light of men. His life was the expression of God to us. I quoted a lot of John chapter 1. I'll just go over it. That way we just put it on the tape the way it should be, the, the recording this morning. I love verse 1, so we'll just start there again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Who? The Word of God. And without him was not anything made that was made. Because when God said, guess what? It was so. It was done. It is finished. <laughs> Amen? When God said, boom, light appears. <coughs> and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Oh, I, I missed verse 4. In him was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. The light is the expression of God's life. That's why he said, Ye, who, us, we are not the source of the light, are we? We are the light. We are the expression of God in the earth. We are not the source of it. 
Does that make sense to you? We are a city set on a hill, which means people see it. It's not hidden. That's why people always know there's something different. It's the witness of God, the nature of God, the outliving of God in your life that brings conviction. The Holy Spirit in your life brings conviction. People can get around you because and all of a sudden be apologizing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is convicting them. The light, the nature of God, the expression of God in your life is convicting them. You don't have to say anything with your words. It's just living. Yeah, that's true. Just living and Christ will do it. Amen. And so it's a beautiful thing to see that, that the life of Christ is the light of God. It is the expression of who He is. And that's why it's so important for us to be the translators, guys. Because otherwise you're not fulfilling exactly what He called you here to be. Be a person. Be a light. Be the light. You'll be the expression of God on the earth. It all makes sense. It all ties together. In John chapter 12 and verse 45, nice verse that supports this. Jesus said this. He says, I have come a light into the world. See? It wasn't just John making it up, because John was recording the gospel, right? It wasn't just John the Baptist who says, I am not that light. <laughs> I'm not worthy to loosen the latch of the sandals of this man of Christ. Amen? He said, I'm not that light. But Jesus himself, he said, in verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 45 uh, or 46 here, he says, I am come a light into the world that whoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. So he himself verified that he has come to be the expression of God, that whoever would believe on him would not abide in darkness anymore. In other words, it's not okay to just make Jesus your Savior. I'll say that over on the side of the house. It's not okay to just make Jesus your Savior. You are to make Jesus Christ your Lord Amen. and Savior. Amen. Without the Lordship of Christ, you will not exemplify the light of God. Amen. Because why? Because it's all about me. If He's my Savior, He saved me from my sins. I don't got to do another thing. But my Bible teaches me that He's the Lord. Amen. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. If we don't like that, we got a problem. Yeah. He is God. Amen. <laughs> and He is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And when I submit to His Lordship in my life, then my obedience yields the expression of His nature. I am the light. So without Christ's Lordship, I cannot be the light. I cannot be the expression of God in the earth. I need to be submitted to the Lordship, what He says. How he says to live life. He has reign, control over everything. My relationships, my finances, my time. The way that I choose to dress and live. It's all led by God. It's his image that we're portraying. We were created in his image. I'm not out there presenting my own image no more. So Jesus said he came a light into the world. That whosoever believe on him, if we believe properly, as Lord and Savior, we would not abide in darkness. You don't believe properly, you can still abide in darkness. You kind of see how that works? Yeah. Yeah. That's why you, you see Christians and they're all bound and they're, they're, they're just totally, you know, dark. And it's, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing to see. Yeah. But that's a person that has chosen not to allow God to work in their life. To, to yeah. follow, obey the word of God. Amen. Let his lordship reign. Yeah. It's been about salvation. And I walked away from the cross. And I never changed. But when I come to the cross and I allow him to be the Lord and Savior, he changes my life Amen. from one degree of glory to another. Amen. And I don't look like I used to, trust me. Right. I don't look yeah. like I used to. Amen. I look a whole lot better. I look like a, a son of righteousness. I look like a son of God. I look like somebody that God has done something because I got a smile on my That's face. Right. Some people you look at, they ain't got a smile on their face no more. Yeah. All they got is all the wrinkles and sags to prove how much despair and hopelessness they went through in their life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's okay. We can go to the grave still looking good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's okay because God has done some wonderful things for us. He has set us free. He has given us His life, and it's a it's a joy to walk in His precepts. In John chapter three, verse nineteen twenty one, we're very familiar with this. this. Is just after John three sixteen, but verse nineteen he says, "This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. This is the thing that begins to trip people up. That light come into the world." He said in John chapter 12, I am the light. I have come that whoever believes in me wouldn't abide in darkness anymore. He says, so the condemnation now is, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You hear that one ringing in your ears? There's no condemnation 
To them that walk in the spirit, not after the flesh. You walk in the flesh, surely the devil can sit there and say, you ain't worthy, you ain't worthy. You're doggone right, man. I ain't applying God's word. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're right. doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean God's holding you to that place, but you'll, right. you'll listen right. to the devil there. Yeah. And he says, this is the condemnation that now comes when a Christian or a believer does not want to walk with the Lord and surrender the Lordship in his life to become who he's called to be. His expression, the light. We are the light. And if you're not the light, sorry, you're in darkness. What else are you if you're not the light? Right. You know, what do you represent? And so he says that this, this condemnation is that the light come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Evil, self, selfish, self-centered. So when we, we don't want to let go of our way for his way, we're saying, I'm really worried about my way, Lord. I want it my way. It's a selfish way. Self-centered way. And that begins to bring condemnation in my life that I'm not walking in the light as he's in the light. Having, I'm quoting the scripture I want to get to. You know what I'm saying? It says, if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. Amen. First John. You knew that's where I was going. <laughs> but bless the Lord. We don't want to be tripped up in condemnation. I'll tell you, the believer, that will help the believer here today. All you have to do is say, God, whatever you say. Whatever you say, Lord, I'll do it. Don't set yourself up for failure and say, oh, you can't touch that, Lord. You can't touch this. You can't touch that. Well, the devil's got you right where he wants you. He's going to sit there and gnaw in your ear. <laughs> you ain't worthy. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to sit there and be going... I don't want to surrender to this. You know, condemnation's coming. Conviction. It's like, I don't want to be there. But like, yes, Lord, whatever you want. i got good news for you. God is a good God. Amen. He ain't worried about what you got. What do you got that he, that he don't have, that he didn't already give you? Yeah, that's true. Give me a break. That's true. I've served the Lord for so many years, I know that God is good. Amen. Sometimes he will require a sacrifice. Sometimes he will, because he wants to prove your heart. Amen. Not for him to know your heart. He knows your heart. Right. He wants you to see who you are. Right. Amen. If God calls you to a place of sacrifice, He wants to see that you know who you are. Amen, Lord, I was willing. Amen. I was willing to give my son. I was willing to tie him up there because there wasn't any other way. I was going to do it, Lord, and I know in all my heart. We went up there together. Didn't have any other rams. Didn't have any other animals. No lambs with us. Son's asking me, Dad, how do we make a sacrifice? Man, you didn't bring anything up the hill with us. Oh, yeah. But I, you know, Lord, you know I was ready. I was tying him down, getting ready to do it. The angel come and told me no. It was so he knew what was in his heart. Yeah. God knew he would be obedient, but Abraham didn't realize he would be obedient until he was tested. So when God requires sacrifices, so you can see who you really are. And thank God, that's a big part of even the building project. For many, I've been through them many, many times, and I pray, God, go through another one. I say that every single time because they are exhausting. Yeah. But God shows you who you really are. That's right. Were you willing to make sacrifice or not? This is like my fourth one, and I've kidded you guys not. I said every time you do it, it takes a year. Boom. Coming up on a year in a couple months here, are we? Yeah. I was not lying. This is what it takes. But what is my life that I'm trying to hold on to? It? That's right. I give it to God. That's a I prove it out. You know what? So I know in my heart where I'm at. This is the first time I got a chance to do it, not being a parishioner in somebody else's flock. Yeah. So God, let me go through this so I can see what's in my heart. I wasn't there just brown nosing. I wasn't there just, you know, I'm saying, trying to show I'm, so, I'm somebody. Oh, I want to be an elder. I want to be a pastor. I want to be something someday, Lord. You know what I'm saying? No. Now I get a chance to see who it is I am. You know what? I'm here. I'm doing it. Don't matter if anybody else is. Yeah, might take forever, but <laughs> I'm doing it. And it's like, bless God, I see what's in me. Amen. You don't know that until you go through it, right? So when God requires sacrifice, count it all joy. Amen. When the diverse trials and temptations come, count it all joy. Because God's going to reveal to you who you are. Yeah. You're going to get a chance to see. Oh, man, that's who I am. Cool. didn't know that before the, before the ordeal, before the test, the trial. I, mean, I just didn't know. Yeah, yeah. You can think. You can hope best, but you don't really know. Everybody wants to think the best of themselves. That's just the way that is. But you don't know until it's tested. Right. When you come through the testing and you see what's in you, then you go, devil, get behind me. You can't say nothing to me. I walked it out in faith. I trusted God. I did what he called me to do. It ain't about the devil being alone. And maybe that was why Abraham had to do what Abraham had to do. So he could sit there and tell that enemy, get behind me. My family's blessed. He said that he is blessing my family. My seed is going to cover and be as the, the, the sand on the seashores. More than the skies and the heavens. That's what God promised him. Yeah. And so he lived with his wife for so many years, and even after the age of fruitfulness, even after trying to help God out and have Ishmael, amen? Yeah. Yeah. 
Even after that, God come back to him and said, what's this? Why are you laughing, Sarah? That's why they named him Isaac. He meant laughter. Because she was laughing her heart. I've been, been, I've been taking my eye cool for years, Lord. It's for hot flashes. It's for hot flashes. <laughs> She's been done through the menopause, man. She's been done through it all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So she was laughing with her heart, yeah, right, you know? But God showed himself faithful. There isn't anything too big for God. Amen. It doesn't matter if the womb was dead. In fact, I think the womb needed to be dead so that they knew it wasn't him, but That's right. it, themselves yeah. it was him. Yeah. And through him, indeed, all the families of the earth are blessed. Amen. By his faithfulness. Faithful Abraham to trust God. And Sarah to allow God in their old age to conceive. In their laughter. In their old age of laughter, you know, they even had to name him so they would always remember. His name is Isaac, laughter. Because God's faithful. And so here we stand today, part of that same family, by faith. He's the father of faith. So he had to see what was in him. He couldn't know he'd be the father of faith. Unless he was obedient to God. He couldn't know where his faith was. Until he was tested. Amen. Who do I really trust? God forbid, things happen. We go through the first affliction. We lose loved ones. We lose jobs. We lose things. We lose stuff. Where you at? The change in your heart, your commitment to serve Christ? Yeah, and it just kind of reminds me, you know, I was thinking about, you said, you know, it sees, you know, where you're at, what's in you, because, you know, with Josh dying, yeah. um, it was two months before he died, Terry said that, you know, she was at the point where, you know, he was just going on the wrong road. He wasn't, you know, there was just, you know, she was worried about the, the, the end result of it, that, you know, he, he could get to a place to where he didn't believe in God or whatever, you know, whatever. But she had prayed one day, you know, the Lord, and she had to, when she said it, she said she knew when she said it that it was serious. And she told the Lord, she said, Lord, I need you to do whatever you got to do because I don't want him or any of her sons to go in a place, darkness, where, you know, they'll never be with you. And it was two months later that Josh died. And now she's living that out. She's living out what she said. That you know, she's she's seeing what's in her now because the Lord told her. The Lord, when he, when she prayed, that the Lord asked her if she was ready for what she was praying. And she said she didn't know. She, she said she told the Lord yes, but she said she thought that it was about herself because she said she didn't have mammograms lately. She didn't. Yeah, because he asked her if you trust her. Yeah, and she so she thought it was something about her life that she was gonna get sick or die or whatever. And he kept asking me, are you sure you trust me? Yeah. And it was two months later after that, Josh died. So she's living out now what's in her. And she needs prayer because she's struggling with yeah. that. Yeah, amen. We will definitely love her. But she said that when she said that, that she meant it, that she really believed it. Absolutely. Whatever God was going to do know to what's save in his you soul. Been tested over here. She was tested. And yeah. yeah. So keep her, keep them in prayer. Yeah. Amen. The devil just... So, I mean, when, when you're tested, you're tested, you know. And don't say the words unless you're ready to be walk tested and walk them out. Because she didn't know what she was getting into. She said she knew the Lord told her, I do trust me. But she didn't know that she was losing her kid. So, you know. Yeah. And you know, um, what's so interesting there is that it, the test of faith is so many times it's, in, it's interpreted by our, our living. Where am I at right now? How does it affect my immediate life, my time, my family, my possessions, my, my security, who I am? And God's trying to show you it's greater than that. Yeah. Because eternity is through a thin veil. Yeah. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we'll all be there. Yeah. And so as long as anything on this side is still pulling on you, you're not in faith. Faith is about being able to look at and know that no matter if that veil's there, you know, I have to transition through this veil or not. Lord, I trust you. This is where it's at. It isn't about whether or not I'll be here tomorrow to see my son's birthday, That's to right. see my son graduate, to see my family do this or do that. It's, it's about living in the reality and knowing that what faith is, is God, whenever, whenever it is, it is. And I'm right. It doesn't have any hold on me. That was where Abraham was at. Abraham knew. I got to offer him up, Lord. It ain't about what this is going to look like when I come down the hill and I don't have my son. 
This isn't about what life is going to go on like without me having my family and seeing the promise fulfilled that you promised me that in, in me, in my seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. This isn't about that, Lord. This is about you called me to a place of faith. This is, I trust you. You told me to do this. This is what we're doing. He had confidence. He had assurance in his heart. He knew whatever he had to do, God was going to do something. Didn't matter what it was. Maybe it was take them all home. For all he knew. He knew who God was. God was somebody that could appear on a scene. Walk in the midst of the fire when, he's, when he did sacrifice. Remember when, when the Bible was describing the sacrifice and how he had to, he had to cut the turtle doves in half and he had to cut you know, the sacrifice and God walked right through the fire. Abraham trusted that God was not of this world. Period. He knew that the angels that came with him to fellowship with him said, should we not tell Abraham? Because, you know, Lot, his nephew, was in Sodom. Should we not tell him about what we're about to do? We're going to destroy the city for its wickedness. Should we not tell him? And they stopped and they visited him. And Abraham knew right away. No doubt in his mind what's going to happen. God's going to be doing some judgment. I need to be pleading on behalf of my, my nephew here. Get him out of town. Save the city, Lord. Why would he plead if he didn't know? If he didn't believe? He knew who God was. He trusted so sincerely in God's ability, His power, His realm, and what He was doing, that it was not to be contended with, that we as mere men are given the pleasure to enjoy a season here on earth, that I will say for this reason, that we might find out who we are. Amen. That's why we're here. Not so how much we can enjoy our families and what kind of jobs and careers we can build. We're here to find out who we are. Proving ground. Amen. It's all it is. It's been exampled in the Bible over and over and over. That's all it is. That's what Jesus showed. It was just a veil. Lazarus showed that, you know. Jesus called him back. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus was like, man, I'm enjoying the presence of God right now. Spirit got to float back to the body so the body can come back out of the tomb. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. That is what life really is. We want to hold on to it like it's everything. Just because we got our emotions all involved. Dude. Oh, I love my kids. I love my, I love my job. I love my friends. You know, it's like, my gosh, man. we got to get our emotions out of this picture because they have no, no, yeah. they have nothing to do with reality. Right. So when Terry was asking that, then what God did, God did for, the, for, for her good. He yeah. did it for his good. He did it because he loves them. He allowed it to happen so that he would not be lost. Amen. There's, a sin, there's a sin that leads to death. Yeah. We're not even to pray for somebody that's in that. It's, it's an act of mercy. Bringing, it is. He allowed his, his covering to come off that he might come home. Because she, she truly believes that. Because he was born again. He was absolutely born again. There's absolutely no she doubt about it. It's like the, the cancer of unbelief is starting to set in. Yeah. And the Lord just yep. stops it short. And that's what she was crying out. Heaven. She just said, Lord, do what you've got to do. And that's I mean, right. And she goes, I mean, do what you got to do. And so, you know, if you find yourself in that place, which I don't believe that of you this morning, I believe better of us, you, you find yourself in that place, you say, God, that's a scary place. You see people yeah. hit that place, and you see other believers hit that place. Josh was a believer. I used to be his children's pastor. Oh, he's prophesying over That's right. He, he was, you know what? He's supposed to be a president. He's a prophet, yeah. Someday, the Lord might give me a, the ability to share a word with them over there. But I believe by his death, he did prophesy. He prophesied that his generation would come back to Christ. And they are. That's right. Yes. Every one of the nephews and nieces that backslid that just want to play games with God, all of a sudden seeing, oh, life is nothing but a vapor now. It is a, a thin veil, and guess what? You get just a little bit older, and all of a sudden you start to fear death. Yeah. <laughs> when I was young, 21, I didn't fear death. When I was 25, 26, it started to mean something to me a little bit. I just had a little bit more you know, gravity about myself. It's like, oh, I'm not as invincible as I thought I was. Yeah. So bless the Lord. God, I'm so good. I, I see some other things. Uh, just kind of like echo Penny's point, I, I think, you know, God kind of gets you, gets you like a running start for you there. You're like, are you yeah. sure? Because I I just read this with um, someone the other day, and we were talking about Abraham and how he knew before he got there that this was going to come. Because he says in verse five, Genesis twenty-two five, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, King James, abide here ye with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder, and we will worship, and again, and come again to you. So he knew they were going, but he also knew, you know, because why else would the Bible say we will come again? Yeah. So he knew they were going. Yeah. He knew they were getting back. He trusted it was just resurrection that, power, man. He did. You know, I believe it was that middle power. power. Amen. He trusted in God's resurrection power. You trust in God's resurrection power today? I do. Amen. 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 That's why I don't have any problems with knowing where Josh went. You know, it's a sad, very tragic guess on the side, but but really, to, to God, a thousand years is a day. This isn't a blink. To us, it's like, oh gosh, there's a little bit of time going on, you know. 
This is just a blank. But in turn, it's wrong. If you stay with the internal perspective, it makes life a lot easier to deal with. Yeah. A lot easier. So, bless the Lord. Did I miss anybody else's point before we go? Go on. Get ready to close here. No. That, that clock? Okay, that's good. I was about to say 1 o'clock. I was thinking, oh, wow, you guys are really patient today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you, Lord. So, John chapter 3, 19 uh, through 21. You know, we see what the condemnation is. The condemnation is because when men would rather have it their way versus his way. When the light comes, they want to kind of gravitate back to their own way. Their ways are selfish. They don't want the light to improve it. You know, we understand that. This is everyone that does selfishness. He hates the light. Yeah, that's not easy to embrace. I don't want it at all because it, the, he that cometh to it, will, their deeds will be reproved. You know, they're going to be made manifest for what they are. He that doeth truth and cometh to light, he does it that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 through 19, which is really cool, when he come up out of the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan, right? He come up out of the wilderness. The, the, uh, Matthew was a very prophetic book. Matthew was always writing to, sh to prove Christ was who he was. In other words, he fulfilled this prophecy. And he said, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. What's he saying? Saying when Christ came into his ministry, the expression of God was on the scene. People were being healed. Lives were being changed. Blind eyes were being opened. You know what I'm saying? They saw great light. So light is the expression of God. Not just making that up. As Jesus walked it, he was expressing who God was. Amen. Takes us back to our, our opening thought there this morning. It was at that point when he came forth and the light began to, uh, uh, to, to, be, to overshadow that death that was in the region. It says in verse 17, From that time, Jesus began to preach what? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So here we go. Here's the message. We've come to, to express God, but what is the expression for? The expression is for God's kingdom come. His will be done. It's kingdom message. I said we are a kingdom generation a couple weeks ago. We looked at that. We are here to be the visible representation of God's nature doing the works of his kingdom. That's exactly what we're doing. What is kingdom business? What is kingdom business? It is saving the souls of men. Verse 18, chapter 4. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, he says what? He says, follow me. And that's not the only thing he said. He says, I'll make you fishers of men. That is kingdom business. He come to preach the message of the kingdom, and the kingdom message is, I will make you fishers of men. It is about gathering as many of God's children together as we can before the day is wrapped up. Amen. The day is consummated, and the bride goes home to be with the bridegroom. That's what it's all about. That's kingdom business. There's no greater thing than praying for our, our loved ones and praying for those that we're working with and praying for those that we meet that God would give us the ability to serve them, to serve them, to walk in humility with them, to be able to bless them, even do good unto them that despite will use us, that we might have entrance, ability, trust, built that they might trust when we express the very words of God. Who God is to us. And it draws them to Christ themselves. Sacrificial. That's what Jesus did. He didn't come to be served. He served. You know, he served. He showed. He backed it up. He allowed God to prove. I got an airdrop from Scott. <laughs> oh, that's great. Should I accept it? It just... Okay, no problem. That was funny. Uh... I'm going to close out with a couple of these thoughts. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. He continues that thought from Matthew chapter 4, taking us on this journey of kingdom, reaching out to folks, being the light. In verse 15, uh, 14 through 16, chapter 5, this is where in the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, he says, you are the light of the world. So Jesus himself said, we're not that source, but we are light. We are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be set, uh, hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but put it on a candlestick. And it gives light on all that are in the house. Now think about what he's saying. <coughs> that once it's lit, it's not for just the reason of being lit. It's for the purpose of giving light to others. Okay, so the, for further refining back what our purpose is, 
is to lead others to Christ, to bring them in to God's presence, His kingdom. We preach the gospel by our actions, our works, and sometimes even our mouths. I think that's a good word. I think that should be recorded for everybody. Because how many of you heard people bullhorns? Where's your actions? It's all about what I can rattle off to you, not what I can do for you. Oh, it's cheap. Amen. So I think that was a good word there. Let your light so shine before men that they may see good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I know it's sacrificial when we do it, but that's okay. You're going to be rewarded for it, and your Father's glorified for it. Amen. It's what makes the difference. It isn't about words. Talk is cheap. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In Acts, Paul, when he was brought before Agrippa, Acts chapter 26, verses 14 through 18, he says, and when we were, this is when the, the, the Lord had stopped him in the desert and shined the light on him. He fell off his horse, right? He says, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. That was this powerful testimony Paul had. He's given to be a minister of God's truth, his life, to the Gentiles, that they would see the light. They would come out of darkness into his light. Bless the Lord. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 12 says that we know this, that it is now high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of armor. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, this is the message which you have heard of him, and declare, we declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 7 says, if we walk in the light as he is in light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. There goes that condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation. Amen. Amen? That's right. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we are forgiven. We are cleansed of all sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 2, verse 8-10 through 10 says again, A new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. But he that loveth his brother, abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling. And I don't have really too much time to go too deep into this, but Matthew chapter 25, parable of the virgins, 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The five that were foolish didn't think to take enough with them. Because you know why? God's just going to come back and get it. It's just going to be a quick thing. Yeah. But those that are wise know better. I need to hear. Yeah. I need to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I need to let His Spirit energize me and my faith each and every day. Because that's what it's going to take yeah. for my light to continue to shine. Yeah. The ones with the oil could slide right in. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, so therefore arise, awake. Amen. It's time to awake from our slumber. At the midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom bridegroom cometh, go out and meet him. So it was everybody's job and purpose to go to meet him, to be ready, to seek him. So they all rose. They trimmed their lamps. And then the foolish oh, said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Because the foolish didn't think it would take and cost them anything. This wasn't going to be a process. This wasn't going to take any time at all. This is just something that Jesus is going to do. He's going to come back and get me right now. Yeah, right. Well, the foolish found out really quick that's not the way they got operates. Amen. Amen? 
And the wise answer saying, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but rather go and go to them and sell and buy for yourselves. Quick new thought that the Lord gave me on this. This isn't about, I always talked about this, this isn't was about their heart, that they were being hard, that they were like, no way. This was about, there wasn't anything that was going to keep them from seeing Jesus. Because they were, they were offering up how they got it, amen? They were offering, hey, go get, go buy, go, go and get from those that buy and sell. You know, but you, you got to realize, I ain't giving anything I got, man. Everything I got is to see Jesus. Amen? Amen. They were giving up at all costs and pursuing them with all their passion. That's why they said not so. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, they were ready, went with him into the marriage, and the door was shut. Then afterwards, the other virgins came, and the Lord, Lord opened to us, and he said, answered and said, he says, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Different message. Watch therefore, for you, neither, you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. Yeah. It's so important to know him. I know I can say this today to summarize the teaching on knowing God. If you'll be willing to be the light, he knows you. That's right. Because if you look and he says, depart from me, in the various places in the, in the New Testament here where he says, depart from me, for I never knew you, it's all because they chose not to walk in the light. They chose to do their own selfish way. And that's why. He said, I didn't know you. He knows us when we're in the light. That's why First John said, if we walk in the light, this is in the light, we have fellowship with him. But if we don't walk in the light, if we don't walk in God's lordship, surrendering, translating what we hear by the Spirit into action, action, activity, then we are positioning ourselves in a place where he may say, depart from me. I never knew you, you that work iniquity. He didn't say that to the people that walk in the light, amen? He didn't say you were working iniquity. Why? You were working his nature, expression, amen? So we're the children of the light this morning, amen? We're the children of the light, right. always. But to be a child of the light means not just a statement of who I am, but it's what I do. It's what I do, amen? So let's pray today. Father, we thank you today, Lord. We are indeed children of light. We're not here to just hear and have our ears tickled and have another word and go home and say, oh, thank God I heard the word of God today. No, Lord, we're here to apply it. Lord, we're here to go home and to be a blessing to others, Lord. We're here to serve our generation. We're here to serve, Lord, as you would speak to us to serve. It's not about us dreaming up our ideas. It's about us responding to what you say. Lord, it's by your word that we live every single day as you speak to our hearts. Let us be obedient to it, Lord. We don't know what we're called unto other than this, to be a blessing. We're called unto being a blessing. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that as we leave this place, that we shall be a blessing to our families, to our loved ones, to our neighbors, Lord, to our friends, to those that we work with, co-workers, Lord. We thank you, Lord, we're here to be a blessing and to shine the light. We are the light. Lord, a city that's set upon the hill. I thank you, God, that as you live through our life, Lord, that your light shines so exceedingly bright. Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. We declare, Lord, in our living out the light, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. By lifting him up, many shall be drawn to us. So, Lord, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, Lord. We thank you for being clear with us to help us to see that life is nothing but a vapor. Amen. It's a thin veil. But, Lord, we rejoice in the fact, knowing that we're all going to make it. All we have to do is listen and do those things that our Father shares with us. So, Lord, we thank you this morning for your great love, for your forgiveness. Lord, there's nothing we have done to earn it. It's just what's given to us. And the way we position ourselves to continue in it is by to allow ourselves to do what you say. Yep. Yeah, I'm not earning your forgiveness at all. It's already been done. And I continue to walk in it as I walk with you. So, Lord, we do have fellowship in the light this morning. We do walk in the light as you're in the light. And so I thank you, Father, that our fellowship is sweet. We bless you. We thank you, Lord. We encourage our hearts to encourage each other. And if there be any here today, Lord, that are struggling in their faith, their obedience, their yield to you, Lord, I pray, Lord, that the conviction of your Holy Spirit would not let them rest until they get right with you. Lord, it's about being right in your sight. Allowing ourselves to surrender from our old ways. That's what repentance is. It's not about my way. It's about what you want. Your way is life. Thank you for that. Your life is abundant. So your, your blessing is upon us. And we love you so much. And we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our life. We bless you in Jesus' name now. Amen. 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 Amen.